Thank you. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> My old friend, Mayor Daly, Assessor Culleton, Governor Kerner, Senator Douglas, members of the Congress, Reverend Clergy, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to uh, come back to Illinois from uh, whence I came, in a sense, and to uh, express uh, my warm regards to all of you. Those of us who move from uh, political occasion to political occasion, and being the leader of a political party, is one of the traditional responsibilities of the presidency a responsibility from which I uh, do not shrink, though on occasion others have. But I come here uh, tonight uh, not merely because this is an outstanding political occasion sponsored by the mayor, but because we're here on most serious business, which affects the welfare of our country. We are here tonight to elect members to the House, to the Senate, to the state offices, we are here as Democrats because we believe that the Democratic Party has a function to fulfill in the most difficult and promising time in the life of our country. Woodrow Wilson once said, what good is a political party unless it's being used by the nation for a great occasion? What is the great occasion for which the nation will use the Democratic Party in 1962? Why should they choose us? and not the Republicans. The Republicans are equally patriotic, are equally devoted to our country, are equally anxious to see it move ahead. What makes this election important in 1962 is that the two parties have clear and distinct differences in their approach as to how they should move this country ahead, or indeed whether the country should just sit down and rest. So I come here in 1962 as President of the United States, as one anxious to see the United States fulfill its promise in the next two years, and because I realize that it will depend in the final analysis upon the members of the House and Senate as to how strong and vigorous this country really is. It has been said so often that we are in a period of competition with the Soviet Union. Of course, it's true. We can meet that competition in part by making ourselves militarily strong, by being first in space, which this administration has decided to do with the country's support. But it is also important. It is also important to remember what Mr. Khrushchev once said, and that is that the day that the Soviet Union begins to outproduce the United States the greatest productive power in the world, the United States. The day the communists are able to come from behind and catch us and pass us, then he said the hinge of history would begin to move. So we come in 1962 to debate, not merely old slogans and cliches and old charges, but to debate which political party best meets the needs of the United States in 1963 and 1964, to educate our children, to provide jobs for our citizens, to provide a better standard of life for our people, to provide better opportunity for all of them, and provide security when they're older. Which country can do this better? I believe our country can. And which political party can lead our country in doing it? The Democratic Party, as it's so often in the past. When I see the things which are written in some of our great newspapers about the program of our party, I barely recognize it. But I recall the same things that were written in the 1930s against the programs of Franklin Roosevelt, and there isn't a person in this country today who does not benefit from these programs. And in the 1970s, it is my hope that the people of the United States will benefit from what we did. 
The fact of the matter is the Republicans opposed all those basic programs in the 30s as they do in the 60s. And that's why I come here in all good faith and ask you to elect Democrats to the House and Senate who recognize the needs of our time and are willing to act. And we have some of them here tonight. <laughs> Congressman Bill Dawson and Barrett O'Hara and John Klusinski and Tom O'Brien and Rowan Libanati and Dallin Rostenkowski and Roman Paczynski and Ed Finnegan. These men on issue after issue, which affects not merely the welfare of their district, but the vitality of the United States, have stood up and voted aye. And they are the kind of men who in the 1930s did the same. So I hope that you're going to elect them and those who are running with them who are here tonight. John Kennedy and Richard Freeman and Joe Salerno, who are candidates for the Congress, and with three more congressmen. All the fights that we lost that we could have won, and all the fights that will be coming up in the next two years that we can win if Illinois will support the Democratic Party in 1962. Now, I have been examining objectively the campaign for the United States Senate. I wanted to find out, uh, as I'm sure you do, which candidate we, the people of Illinois will support. And I found, after examining the record of the two candidates, that there is only one candidate in this race who supported our efforts to expand the coverage and increase the amount of a minimum wage of $1.25 an hour. One candidate voted yes, and the other voted no against $50 a week to somebody working in a business which does a gross volume of a million dollars a year or more. There is only one candidate in this race for the Senate who supported the efforts of Paul Douglas to pass the Area Redevelopment Act, which was specifically drafted to assist the chronically unemployed areas of Southern Illinois, as well as parts of Indiana and West Virginia and Eastern Kentucky and parts of Pennsylvania, where we've had people out of work for two, three, and four years, 30% of the population. A bill drafted to assist those communities. One candidate for the Senate voted aye, and the other against it. There is one candidate in the Senate race who voted to assist education, secondary education, and to pay our teachers better and higher education. This state has more children in it than I saw today and most of them will want to go to college in 1970. Where are they going to go? We're going to have to build in the years from 1960 to 1970 as many college buildings in this country to send your sons and daughters to college as we build in 150 years. We're going to double the population of our colleges in 10 years, and if we don't, we fall behind. They are our greatest resource. We had a bill to assist those colleges to build those dormitories and laboratories and engineering establishments. It failed finally in the House by 28 votes. One candidate is for it, one candidate is against it. There is only one candidate in this race who has supported effective civil rights, who has fought the filibuster in an effort to provide equal rights for all Americans to which they are entitled by the Constitution and the laws of morality. And there is only one candidate in this race who supported an effective drug control bill before it became a national scandal. And there's only one candidate in this race who supported medical care for the aged under Social Security. And make no mistake about it, this bill does not affect primarily those who are old and destitute because they will have some kind of care. It affects those and their families who must contribute to supporting an older parent who is sick who can find their savings eaten alive and who must at the same time educate their children for 25 cents a week under Social Security. We can give security to those who are older and also to their children who must meet their obligations and there's only one candidate in this race and that candidate is Sid Yates and that's why I hope he'll be in the United States Senate. You may say that uh, you're not old and you're getting more than $1.25 minimum wage and uh, 
you're not going to be out of a job, so you don't need unemployment compensation, you don't need job retraining, you don't live in southern Illinois, you live in the city, but you don't live in a project where urban renewal is important. But the fact of the matter is that no one in this country can be prosperous, regardless of what his method of earning a living may be, unless the entire country is prosperous. No one in this country can be prosperous if farm income declines. Last year, farm income for the average fam family in Illinois was up 30% of what it was the year before under Ezra Taft Benson. How can Illinois be prosperous if the people who make farm implements and automobiles and all the rest can't find anyone to sell it to? How can we be prosperous if we move from a recession in 58 and one in 60? Unless we can maintain the forward thrust of our economy, there isn't anyone in the country whose interests aren't adversely affected. That's what this election is about. Which party, which party, and which candidates, based not on speeches they may make for 40 days before an election, but which party and which candidate, based on the last 50 years, best understands the domestic needs of this country? Which party has said yes, and which party has said no? That's why I think the Democrats are going to win in November 1962. The choice is clear. The Illinois Republican delegation, 82% voted against the Housing Act of 61, urban renewal, housing for the elderly, middle income housing, the area redevelopment. 100% of the Republicans from this state voted against area redevelopment. After all those speeches about assisting the depressed areas and mining areas of Southern Illinois, when we try to do something about cleaning up the water, which is necessary for new industry, 65% of the Republicans from this state voted no. On our space authorization to make this country first, 50% of the Republicans in this state voted no. On our emergency feed grain program, which has increased the income of the farmers of this state, 100% voted no. Now these are the issues. On urban affairs reorganization, to give our cities somebody sitting at the cabinet, on transportation, housing, all the rest, where 75 to 80 percent of our people live in the cities and have no voice. 100 percent of the Republicans from the state of Illinois voted no. Therefore, I come out here as bearing a responsibility which uh, falls on both of the Congress and the President. We propose these programs which are of assistance to the economy and the people of this country, and the Congress votes them up or down and they have voted them up by three or four votes, and they voted them down by three or four votes. So I come to Illinois and ask your help in electing Sid Yates to the Senate, sending these congressmen back and committing Illinois and the country to moving forward in the 1963s and 4s. <laughs> this is a great and rich country. It is in the center of the stage. It sits in a most conspicuous position. Everything we do here is marked around the world in the great struggle which is reaching its climax in this decade. Everything we do for good and for bad. And I believe that we can do those things that can make this country not only the leader of the free world, but also a leader in whom all can have a sense of pride and a sense of participation and a sense of mutual progress. I come to Illinois and ask your help, not as part merely of a political campaign, but as part of a national movement to commit this country once and for all to progress. Thank you.